Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Today we're back here with Kill Count, and today, well, we got another recent one. Well, watch your back, because we got Abigail from 2024. So, what I'm going to say is, let's just say some kidnappers are going to get flipped on. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I won't say anything else. I did see a s how to beat on this, but, well, let's just get to the body count. Be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoy. Here we go. Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up hey, the James. victims in all our favorite horror movies and show you how they were oh, made. I'm James H. Denise, and today we're looking at Abigail, released in 2024. Abigail was mm -hmm. made by Radio Science, Radio Science. You know by now, and stars Melissa Barrera, who led both their Scream sequels as Sam Carpenter. Similar to From Dusk Till Dawn, it begins as a crime caper before switching to a monster movie halfway through. The twist was heavily advertised, though to be fair, I'm not sure how they would have marketed the movie otherwise. Still, if you want to go True. in completely blind, like said, this is your one and that little girl. Warning. Okay, you good? Go after good. it. <laughs> Abigail began as a modern update of Dracula's, Dracula's daughter, daughter, but eventually became its own story entirely. It's only leftover tie to the 1936 film as who Abigail ends up being. After making their imprint on the Scream franchise, this movie sees Radio Silence return to ready or not mode. And it's not just because of the mansion setting or all the buckets of blood splatter. It's because it's got an incredible ensemble cast playing hilarious characters. They're not good people. I mean, they kidnap a little girl, but it's hard not True. to like them thanks to their chemistry and banter. And as if the cast of Criminals wasn't good enough, Abigail is an amazing child slash monster performance by Alicia Weir. Yeah. The story monster. is a She's little jumbled and feels like it falls in on itself during the third act, but any excuse to watch these performers perform is fine with me. It's too fun for me to really care. Of course, <laughs> as per usual with Radio Silence movies, I won't pretend that I'm unbiased. They're my friends. I like and respect True. them as people so much that it might affect how I judge their movies. But also, it's not like my True. opinion is a rare one. Their films are crowd pleasers, going by pretty much every metric available, and Abigail Amen, is no brother. different. How many bodies will grace this? Radio Silence is in a golden age. Whatever could that be? A sponsor, maybe? Let's go find out. Let's go. Woohoo. Yellow. Hmm? Ow. We've hacked your YouTube channel. What? Ooh, you want there. your videos to stay up. Use the razor in this box to shave your head. Then put the hair in the box and leave it outside. Is this not a kink thing? P.S. This isn't a kink thing. Huh. Uh-huh. Well, All right. What'd you do? <laughs> oh, come on. A generic razor? You couldn't have sprung for something I'll premium shave? like the Dome Shaver Pro from today's sponsor, Manscaped. It comes with five oh. premium rotary oh, blades designed specifically for head yeah. shaving. Its skin safe technology means I'm less likely to experience nicks and cuts, and its magnetic blade head makes cleaning as easy as one, two, three. Yeah. I we don't, we care. don't care. Well, you should, because after all, <laughs> this flex adjust technology helps each blade stay close to my dome, adapting to its that happened to be like, contours. Okay. So, I don't know, if I you want to do some weird thing with my hair, I just back. thought right, the closest Mr. possible shave would be to your benefit. Because I was wrong. And you didn't even include any aftercare, like Manscaped's Dome Soother Aftershave Lotion. It's dermatologist tested and yeah, infused with soothing shit. ingredients Damn, to calm and really nourish good your scalp. By the way, right now I'm asking, my brother actually has two other razors. Jesus, fine, we'll leave you alone if you just shut up. All right, that's more like <laughs> That it. works. If you ever think of trying to mess with me or this channel again, you'd better head over to manscaped.com and get the Dome Shaver we'll Pro shave and your. Dome Soother. <laughs> and when you do, use promo code KILLCOUNT20 for 20% off your order, plus free shipping. How many bodies anyway, have graced this ballet of blood? Let's find let's out and get the kills. Yeah, <sighs> no use in hiding it. Girl's a vampire, and yeah, she's gonna turn the tables on those kidnappers. <laughs> Though I can't remember if her dad was actually Dracula. Like I said, there is a connection to Dracula's daughter, but uh, I think it was just mostly the fact that she's a vampire. I honestly don't remember the story, but like I said, all the broad strokes, but well, let's see how many people died to Abigail and or any other vampires that are in the area. Let's go find out. Begins with dancing shoes as our titular tiny Ooh, dancer like rehearses her routine. Yep. yep, there she is. It's Abigail. She's dancing to Tchaikovsky's hey, song. Oh, and oh, it's oh. a good thing that song is so much ass, because you're going to hear it a lot throughout the film. It's also fitting on a meta level. Swan Lake was used in the opening credits of the original 1931 Dracula. Elsewhere in the city, a bunch of crooks assemble. A gun toting gale with a lollipop gets picked up by a couple of shady customers. Is the temperature okay back there? Is it uh, too cold or too hot? Or? Temperature's fine. Hey, shady or not, you'd still want 
wants five stars. The black-clad bandits yeah. use a tracker on Abby's car to beat her back to her fancy-ass house. The criminals don't know each other yeah. or who their target is. All they know is it's a kidnapping job. No one said it was a kid. Oh, no one said that. It's a fucking kid. I mean, you're, you're kidnapping someone. Yeah, you could have said literally something. part of the word. Abigail gets home and cozies up in bed, only to get ambushed by the kidnappers. She puts up quite a fight, stabbing one of them with a pencil before they calm her down with a Swan Lake sedative. Then they bag the ballerina and duffel abduct her away. They're almost caught when an alarm system goes off, but they make it to their getaway van and successfully escape. They take their blindfolded bounty to a radio silence rendezvous, a big old mansion, specifically an yep. overgrown neo tutor way outside the city called Wilhelm Manor. It's a scream. They file inside past the guy who hired them, Lambert, played by Giancarlo Esposito in a very John Carlo Esposito role. He's the mysterious middleman between the crew and their client, and his job is to keep things mysterious for everyone. They're not allowed to talk about okay. their personal lives, and he collects their phones like they're seeing Dave Chappelle do stand up. They're also not allowed to reveal their names. Hey, no names. You know the fucking rules. Of course, it's hard to talk about Odd. a movie if the characters don't have names, so thankfully, Lambert gives them code names based on members of the Rat Pack Frank, Dean, Sammy, Peter, Joey, and. Damn. This man got his finger on the pulse of pop culture. And you're Don fucking Rickles. You happy? <laughs> Not really. As Rickles intimated, <laughs> the Rat Pack's a pretty Hi, dated guys. reference. How come you called us rats? So if you didn't know, they were a group of singers who also made Vegas-centered films like the original Ocean's Eleven. Lambert leaves the pack as yeah, they secure Frank's the house and they're captive. To minimize risk and exposure, only Candy Girl Joey is allowed to interact with Abigail. Joey's a nurse and is codenamed after Joey Bishop, a comedian and talk show host. Mm -hmm. The group's leader, Frank, is named after Frank Sinatra, leader of the Rat Pack after Humphrey Bogart died. The group's muscle is Peter, oh, named after Peter Lawford, who married into the Kennedy family. Getaway driver Dean is named after Dean Martin, the king of cool and singer of that's Amore. Computer hacker Sammy That's is named Amore. after Sammy Davis Jr., Mr. Show Business, while the group's no-nonsense military marksman is named after Don Rickles, insult comic and honorary member of the Rat Pack. Their job is to defend the hop- I wonder why they came up with the name for the Rat- I mean, why the Rat Pack? I mean, probably not I think about it. Vampire fan on rats or something? Or was that like a- I don't know. Like, I know vampires always haunt the humans, but wasn't there like- Talks about like going the for rats, they couldn't find a human, or maybe that's just reference to a bat. There, you know, bats hunt the rat. You know, get it? Basically, they're the rats, and Abigail and I think the client too are the vampires. So, you know, bat, rat. You get it. Anyway. House for 24 hours while ransom is collected from Abigail's unknown wealthy father. At least this dope mansion makes for a chill hang. It's even got a fully stocked open bar. And they say crime doesn't pay. Despite Lambert's ban on personal information, the boozin quickly gets them swapping backstories. Crisp $100 bill, you can tell me one true thing about me. Turns out Joey has a near superhuman ability to read people. So she turns exposition into a parlor trick. She calls out Frank as an ex-detective, having noticed his use of police hand signals. She notes that Peter is a native of Quebec, that Rickles was in the Marines, and that Sammy's a rich girl who's in it for the thrill. As for Dean, he's just vibing. You've got oh. loose wiring. Probably a sociopath. As Joey leaves to check on their hostage, Frank calls her out as a former drug addict hence her penchant for snacking on sweets. These two have been button heads yeah, from the get-go, since during the kidnapping, he was about to punch that kid. Joey don't approve of that violence, and is nice to Abigail, even giving her a break from her kitty shackles. She has a soft spot for kids, probably because she has one herself, and a strange son who we briefly saw on her phone before it was confiscated. She lets her guard down enough to mention him to Abby. He's... Oh boy. Just, uh... Normal kid. Just an innocent kid. Abigail says her father <laughs> won't pay the ransom because he doesn't care about her. She also implies he's not a man to mess around with. I'm sorry about what's gonna happen to you. Oh, uh, oh boy. Joey gets spooked and asks Frank who the father is. Yeah, honestly, if I heard that and I wasn't, I mean, before anyone asks, no one ever do this, but if I heard that from a kid I was kidnapping, I'd be like, uh, guys, I'd be like, okay, back to that. <laughs> And probably lock every door and window that she could probably get out. I'm just saying, look out. Because the fact that that kid said something like that, I'd be like, hey, not good. Yeah, and that's probably something to tell the guys. Like, uh, hey, guys, heads up. Kids said we're about to die tonight. I know it's probably nothing, but uh, heads up, just in case. But, gotta make sure, right? <laughs> anyway is, but he doesn't know, so he heads to the girl's room and politely asks her himself. Who the fuck 
is your father. And since he asked so nicely, she lets him know. He stopped Lazar. The father reveal freaks Frank it. out like you were on the Maury show. In fact, it's enough to make him, the consummate professional, try to quit the job right then and there. A bunch of the crew has heard of Christoph Lazar. He's a kind of Kaiser Soze-like crime boss, so ruthless and mysterious, some consider him an urban legend. But he's really for reals, and the group nearly calls it quits. It's only the promised payout of $7 million each that keeps them inside for now. They split up to protect the house from outside well, threats. Right. Joey finds an opulent library with a malfunctioning window and a haunted mansion statue. Yo, is that Jamiroquai? She also checks on Rickles, Rippy. who's been holed up in a sniper's nest. Actor Will Catlett did a lot of firearm training to play his character. Because military guys, they can tell whether you know how to handle the gun or not, and that's important to me to make them look good. Rickles sees Joey hey, as the only other proper professional, so a trust develops between them. Trust and lust, am I right? And keep the grab ass to a minimum. Aww. Oh, man. What's you don't fuck. Dean's been trying to grab some ass of his own. So, you got a boyfriend, uh... Something like that. Sammy would rather pass the time watching cartoons, especially after Dean tries to jump scare her out of her pants. What were you hoping for there, dude? A prank gone wrong, gone sexual? Because it didn't work. No. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, stupid oh, motherfucker! Oh, no. God! I didn't mean to scare you. I don't give a shit. Don't you pass, Dean everybody. Dean goes looking for a midnight snack and gets a karmic jump scare in the form of a rat. An off-screen presence crunches on the rodent before getting mean with Dean as oh, a main course. His screams for help Hi, are heard Dean. by Sammy, who comes to investigate. She discovers his headless body propped Ew. up at the kitchen table. Death by Dean Capitation. Dean was played by the late Angus Cloud, best known for his starring turn in Euphoria. Cloud sadly Angus. died weeks after wrapping his role, right after the SAG After Strike suspended production. That means they had to come back and finish making the movie after his death. Everyone said they wanted to make sure they did it well and do him justice. Cloud had finished filming all his material, so there was no need for digital recreations or sound alike ADR. Like all the other cast members, he brings a unique energy to the ensemble. We've seen this character type before, but he has an authenticity that elevates Dean and keeps him hilarious. Let me get a piece of that candy. It's your own. Fuck you too. I would have loved to see him in more projects. Rest in peace. The commotion gathers the group I mean, I don't know what happened to him, but like I said, well, might as well do this and, uh, um, cheers, mate. Rest in peace, man. I mean, in real life, but you get the idea, right? Well, I just kind of wanted to, you know, do it for him. I mean, sheesh, only weeks after? Rough. I mean, get the chance to finish. <sighs> Poor dude. Anyway, that's me, single. Moving along in the kitchen, where Joey surmises who's behind this gory scene. A guy named Valdez, Christoph Lazar's legendary enforcer. His bloodthirsty reputation is widely known. <laughs> Rickles recounts a story about some of Lazar's men who were going to testify against him. Even though they were guarded on the top floor of a building, Valdez managed to kill them all. All eight bodies are ripped apart. Limbs and organs missing. Decapitations. That's his signature. Oh great, YouTube's gonna love that. I'm not a fan of introducing oh, a boy. second unseen character. These characters talking about Lazar and now Valdez makes things a little confusing, especially when the accusations mm -hmm. start flying. Like when Abigail tells Joey that Frank admitted to being Valdez. The confusion is enough to make Rickles finally wanna <laughs> leave, but the front door is blocked by an iron gate so sturdy, not even Peter can break Oof. it down. Out. Lock. Thanks, Peter. Their meddling sends the house into full lockdown mode, uh -oh. barring all the doors and windows and leaving them trapped like rats in a pack. Oh, now I get it. I get that. I get the name now. I get it. The Rat Pack, right? Wilhelm Manor was played by the <laughs> Guinness Manor, aka Glen Maroon in Dublin, Ireland. It was built in 1904 by socialite Arthur Ernest Guinness of the Guinness Beer <laughs> Dynasty. He actually built two houses, so <laughs> one could just be man. used for parties. Man, that fucking rules. Radio Silence found the Heard house people love the party. The story to the location. The same thing they did for their VHS segment 103198. The place was abandoned when they arrived, so production dressed it with everything you see. The only locations not filmed at the manor were the library and kitchen cellar, which were sets built by production designer Susan Cohen. I guess Cohen. they couldn't fit everything in there. Joey plan to take the others out and escape on their own. But Rickles only makes it like five steps before he stopped dead in his tracks. When Joey checks on him, she sees him missing a whole lot Ugh. of face and neck flesh. Jesus. Yeah, kinda need those parts to live, man. Or Joey heads downstairs and holds the rest of the team at gunpoint, but Frank manages to turn it into a stand off. He don't take kindly to Abby's accusations, so he sends that Peter really upstairs for to a fight. Their kidnap Eve. It's my job, Joey. Peter's like a lovable big dumb dog, and he develops a cute friendship with Sammy. You're just missing, so you have to finish the whole bottle, aren't you? I don't know why you would say this. Oh, that's bad. 
Ha! Mm. I like you. Ah. Really? But he is not a moral man. Earlier, after <laughs> Abigail accidentally saw Frank unmasked, he was quick to jump to termination. Now we have to kill her. Actor Kevin Durand plays the multifaceted character perfectly and says the big oaf drinks so much to drown out his guilt. Durand's horror credits include Legion and Tragedy Girls, but I'll always think of him as that sick son of a bitch Martin Kimi in Lost. Alex didn't deserve that! Joey tries to protect Oof. Abby by pummeling Peter, but Abigail finally shows her true colors. And those colors are blood red. <laughs> There we go. Valdez isn't some hitman, it's Abigail herself. Frank shoots her before she can do any damage, but not even a headshot can nope. keep her down. That's wrong. Realize their new reality. Yep. We can't have a fucking vampire. Yep. A ballerina vampire. It's a twist that was never a twist. Well, thanks a to ballerina the vampire. Which may have impacted your enjoyment of the film. I'm honestly fine going <laughs> like a full half hour without the characters knowing, but 50 minutes feels like a lot when you're sitting there waiting for the other point shoe to drop. Frank wants to fight back. Yeah, honestly, when your whole, like, advertisement is basically like, hey, watch these guys get killed by a little kid vampire. Like, 15 minutes. Sheesh, I was like, yeah, can, can we just get to the vampire thing, please? Thank you. Sheesh. A little rough. So, wait, if she's Valdez, or, like, the, you know, the hitman, the that mean she took care of the witnesses? Like, remember, top floor... Pull their body completely apart. That was her? Sheesh. I mean, like, no vampires are strong, but that's the kid. Imagine the dad. Yike. I mean, imagine her just being able to just... The human body. Anyone else? Mm hmm. Anyway. So they gather their collective knowledge about vampire lore. He sends Peter to make wooden steaks out of pool cubes and Sammy to get garlic from the kitchen. I got him. That's an Sammy. onion. Those are fucking onions. <laughs> Incredible line reading from Dan Stevens, <laughs> who kicks ass in the guest and double dipped in horror this year thanks to Cuckoo. Cuckoo. Radio Silence wanted a sort of Cuckoo. breakfast club oh, ensemble is. of characters. There's like the hacker and the driver and the muscle and the, mm -hmm. I don't know what Frank is, he's just an asshole. All the actors yeah, were given room to improvise, which resulted in a lot of funny outtakes on the Blu-ray. This place is fire. And it's got a fire. Cloud came up with a scene where he scares Sammy with a mask, while Stevens had a whole list of names for a scene where he calls Abigail Angelina Ballerina. It's hilarious seeing them do more than a dozen takes, since he keeps cracking up Barrera by using new names. So I walk in there to see little Nelly Nutcracker memorizing my fucking face, to see baby black swan memorizing my fucking face. Oh, <laughs> so I walk in there to see Penelope Pirouette memorizing my fucking face. Oh, <laughs> also had input on their character's nice. backstories and appearances. <laughs> Peter was scripted to be from Louisiana, but Kevin Durant changed it to Quebec so he could use his real accent from Northern Canada. Barrera helped pick her leather outfit and shaggy hair that I absolutely loved. Catherine Newton took inspiration from Gwen Stefani, suggesting a skirt and tattoos like the fuck mom one on her hands. Love this character. It's just kind of who I want to be. Stevens also cultivated his look with inspiration from I Think You Should Leave. The slick back hair. Um, yeah, I mean, we wanted him, the, the reference was we wanted him to be a real piece of shit. Hey man, people can change. Hey. As always, hey, you're the one dressed as him. A loving set where all their cast and crew had nothing but positive things to say about each other. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been in a cast with such different types who, who all seem to get along so well. Joey sits this fight out, thinking they're oh. underestimating their fun-sized foe. The other three follow Hi, the sound of Swan Lake upstairs, where Abigail's having a partner dance with Dean's headless body. It's Ugh. enough to give them pause, as it should. This shit is absolutely horrifying. The brawl begins, but Abigail Honestly, has that's a cuter run. Immunity, so she turns Sammy's ribcage into a speed bag. Peter's crucifix becomes a weapon for Stabby Abby, who punctures his chest <laughs> damn near 30 times by my count. Goddamn! Nice. Frank takes a staking through the leg. Ouch! Style, and that finally sends everyone running, or limping, away. Abigail just lets them go, because she likes to play with her food. The group rejoins Joey to lick their wounds. That's While rough. their vampire lore proved useless, they do have one thing they know works, a needle full of night-night juice. They split up to search the manor, and a jump-scaring bat causes Sammy to trip and fall into a swimming pool. Unfortunately Ugh. for both of us, it is chock full of rotting corpses. How many bodies are we talking? Like two? Three? Yeah, Sammy, uh, p please give us a number. <laughs> nope. Uh, Josh! I'll go ahead and oh. make Tim do it. Tim, sorry. Sorry. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Tim counted 41 soggy dead bodies, dead bodies in this people suit, determined from the shots in the film and some behind the scenes footage too. But don't even Thank think you. about asking us the gender breakdown here. Sammy yeah, is no played kidding. by modern Good luck with that. Catherine Newton, who we've seen on this show in Freaky, Freaky and Lisa Frankenstein. Well, she had a great time in the much smaller practice pool. This is so fun. The same could not be said when they got to the real deal. I'm gonna take you to the worst place in the world. Newton had to be submerged in a tank within a tank, built with a whole bunch of dead bodies. It took them a while Ooh. to film, and by the end of it, she was nearly as traumatized as her character. I'm like having PTSD right now. While dealing with the splinter, Peter is tracked nice. down by Abigail. She megans her way after him, and Kool-Aid Man's through a locked door. Oh, yeah. Chelsea has assured me that running around doing dance moves is highly accurate to young girls who do ballet. The chase is cut short I don't by know. a poorly timed entrance oh. from Frank. <laughs> Oops, gotta hurt. Sorry, Frank. Sammy arrived to help as Abigail gives Frank a nudge down the stairs. During the ensuing fight, their needle gets knocked behind a locked Shit. and Abby bites Sammy in the arm. Abigail goes full swan and starts to fly away with Frank until she's stopped by Peter bodying the ballet. Dang, Pete, the nice big boy jump. manages to pin her down long enough for Joey to stick her with the nappy time needle. You okay, little lady. Eesh, calm rough down. kid. I'm gonna your fucking heads off and pours myself on your blood. Hey, that is not calming down. Irish actress Alicia Weir Jeez, had to research Alicia. vampire lore since her only exposure to them was the Vampire Diaries. Seriously. That was it. <laughs> Alicia doesn't know what Twilight is. <laughs> to transform her wow. appearance, she wore contact yeah, lenses fair. and dentures, which she worried would interfere with her American accent. But it didn't. She pulled it off, no problem. Flawless American accent. And only afterwards did I discover that she's from Dublin and that she's never had a dialect coach. She just watches the telly. Although Abigail's <laughs> unconscious, Sammy's worried about her bite. I feel like I got bit by a fucking vampire. <laughs> They lock Abby in the elevator and ask about the side effects, but the smarmy marmy hits them with an I don't know, no matter how much they compliment her performance. You're really good at pretending to be a little girl. Thank you. I've had a few centuries of experience. Abigail reveals she's the brains behind this entire evening, and that Lambert actually works for her. She knows all their real names and backstories, and reveals them in another exposition dump. It doesn't work nearly as well as the earlier one from Joey. Just feels like too much info too fast. I will yeah. note that Frank's real name is revealed to be Adam Barrett, a nod to filmmakers Adam yeah. Wingard and Simon Barrett, who Radio Silence worked with in the original VHS. Abby says each of them crossed her father in some way, so she's lured them here to kill them as revenge. As the Pool of Death shows, it's far from the first time she's played this game. She keeps doing it to try to get her dad's attention, but it hasn't worked yet. Man, even vampires have daddy issues. Abigail offers to spend- Yeah, honestly, if I was dealing with that kind of issue, I would have been like, you know what, dad? Screw you. Sorry if I flipped off, but you know what I mean. Just saying, screw him, you know? I just feel like, kid, or, I don't know, <laughs> I'm gonna keep calling you, kid. Just- your dad don't care. You said it yourself. Just move on. Also, can we go? Ugh. Anyway, move along. Keep an eye on Lambert later. Bear the first person who frees her, but when Peter tries to take the deal, Joey stops him with a flesh wound. She and Sammy leave to treat it, so Frank is left alone with Abby, who shows how much she's playing with them by promptly breaking free. She's ready Oops. to sink her fangs into Frank, but Joey returns and gets to bashing out a window. The sun has finally started rising, and it blows up Abby's hand with a blood splatter. Yuch! But that little nub has grown back fast, so Joey and Frank get the fuck out of Dodge. The whole group heads to the library, where that open window is letting in a beam of sweet, <laughs> sweet sunlight. Sammy's even able to stick her hand in it, which means she's still human. You know, for now. Trapped within this yeah, life, Joey for now. talks about her estranged kid. That's why I took this job. With that money, I can start over, you know? A reset. It sparks an idea in Sammy, who figures the house must have a control room she can use to reset the lockdown. They split up once again to search the house. Frank's wary of Sammy's bite, so Peter volunteers to pair up with her. I love the relationship between these two. You're my friend. While they check out the manor's greenhouse, Abigail puts on a record that Sammy starts hearing in her head. Get out of my head, man! While that bite didn't turn her into a vampire, it has left Sammy open to Abigail's influence. She parsecs into Sammy's body and uses it to kill Peter, tearing Ooh. out a chunk of his neck and Poor sucking Sammy. him down like a Capri Sun. 
set to see him go. <laughs> Sam Miguel uses her radio to lure Joey and Frank to her location. While she's waiting, we get a kick-ass dance sequence set to Blood and Tears by Danzig as Abigail pirouettes in Sammy's body. This puppet dance was something Jeez. production like came up with last minute and thought they would only use a little bit. That? However, Newton was so experienced, having been a Miami City ballet dancer, they wound up using the entire act in one of the film's standout scenes. The movie pauses for a moment. Alicia Weir was no stranger to dancing either. She previously starred in the movie yeah, adaptation Matilda the of Matilda the Musical. But unlike nice. Newton, Weir had never done ballet before and had to endure eight weeks of training with choreographer Belinda Murphy. I'd never gone on point, so for the opening scene, I had two to three months of rehearsals. She was also excited about the movie's stunts and fight scenes. When I heard there was loads of stunts, I was so determined to try and do all the ones that I could do myself. And she did, putting on a harness and doing a whole lot of wire work. Frank and Joey find Sammy crying crocodile tears over Peter's body. He's dead. She got him. Oh no. She tries to attack them, chasing them all the way back to the library. Before she can pounce, Joey uses a platter to reflect some sun back at her, splattering sand oh. bits all over the place. The blood explosion has become a radio silence. Yeah, statement. pretty much. Probably because it brings the boys so much joy. The minute they <laughs> over, the whole crew just breaks into cheer. It's so fun, and there's blood dripping everywhere, and people are messy, but that's the exciting part. They're huge fans of practical effects and blood, and thinks it helps their <laughs> actors <laughs> and physically carry the violence that's been done to them. Matt and Tyler. Love also, I'm surprised blood. Spring didn't do that, but then again, even they were like, explosions eh. And reportedly used 30,000 liters of blood in the movie, with 18,000 used in the pool scene alone. They wound up <laughs> using all the blood available in Ireland, and had to import more from the UK. Jeez, guys. <laughs> One of the bookcases opened. Honestly, yikes. <laughs> you imagine they just run, we all, oh, god damn, we gotta stop supplying radio blood. Radio side of the blood, they're running out, again. <laughs> Oh, jeez. I mean, at this point, like, <laughs> you think they were like, oh, oh, it's radio silence. Double up the production. They're going to need a lot, a lot of blood. What are you doing this time? What? Old Mansion? Watch out, what? <laughs> Yeesh. I mean, can't blame him for cheering. Like, who doesn't love an explosion? Anyway, <laughs> move along. Up, revealing a secret passageway that leads to a control room. There, oh, finally, Joey we find a fangified Lambert. He's been under Abigail's control for the past two years, but he's tired of it and wants to be free. After restraining Joey, Lambert offers Frank a deal. If he helps him kill Lazar, they can be co-owners of this whole criminal empire. The only catch? He'll have to become a vampire himself. At this point, Frank decides, eh, why not? Screw it. Bite me. Better than being dinner. Lambert knocks out Joey and proceeds to chomp into Frank. He's not gonna be a puppet like Sammy either. Lambert gives him the full treatment, which involves feeding him some of his own blood. Frank completes his transformation by vomiting up just like, all his blood, Yikes. I think. I mean, it seems like all of it. How is he not effect, dead? Blood was pumped through tubes going into Stevens' mouth, which then bounced off a back plate that pushed the blood back out. It was enhanced with blood elements Ugh. filmed on a green screen. Other practical effects included a prosthetic arm for Abigail that looks like a little bloody push pop and a prosthetic neck piece for Duran with meaty pieces Newton could tear out with her teeth. It reminds me of those Jurassic Park dinosaur toys with the dino Pretty damage wounds. Lambert's thrilled to have a new best bud, but Frank stabs him in the back, oh. leading to another big wet explosion. Damn. That's Hi, Lambert. me up, you undead prick. Abigail arrives, having predicted Lambert's betrayal. She moves to finish off Frank, but with his newfound vampire strength, he gives Abby a taste of her own medicine. During the fight, Joey lifts the lockdown and grabs her phone, then escapes as Frank finishes his ballerina buffet. I fucking hate ballet. Joey finds the secret passageway's been sealed back up, so she calls her son and leaves him an emotional voicemail goodbye. You're the one good thing I did in life. I just needed you to hear that. Frank finds her and unsympathetically tosses her back into the library. He's a full-on bad guy vampire now, but Joey's still prepared to fight him. Let's have some fun. This fight is sick. She wants to stick his heart with a wooden stick, but she can't match his strength and he tosses her from the second story. Uh, She's saved by a last minute swan oh. dive that begins an alliance of convenience. I'm too weak to take him alone. Abigail and Joey team up against Frank, and the three of them have an all out vampire, vampire fight. Human fight. 
ladies have a strong start. I mean, Bot Dunn told us, girls get it done. And Barrera, as proven in the Scream sequels, is a reliable action movie ass kicker. I love the adrenaline. But Frank is still a formidable foe. And Joey gets poked with a poker, which is then pulled out the other side. Ouch! Ouch. Frank tries to turn Joey into his puppet with a bite and commands her to help him kill Abigail. But his technique's a little off, so Joey delivers a surprise attack. Oh. As Abigail joins in, she tells him that he can't just be turning people right off the bat. It takes a long fucking time to learn how to do all the cool shit. The ladies regain the upper hand, and with their powers combined, they spin yeah. Frank into a red-hot blood oh. oblivion. Aw, oh, man, all those books in there are probably ruined. What? Abigail agrees to let Joey go, since they're gal pals now. But her exit's interrupted uh -oh. by the arrival of Abby's daddy, Christoph Lazar, uh, Papa. says he goes by many names, including, presumably, Dracula. Lazar's all too happy to gobble up go. Joey, but Drac's daughter intervenes on her behalf. She calls him out for being an absentee father. She was here. When you weren't. When you weren't. That cutting remark gets through to him, so he lets Joey go after telling her his and Frank's favorite sketch comedy show. I think you should leave. Joey gets outside where the cruise van is still waiting. She pops in one last piece of candy before driving off, and the movie ends with a final tribute to Angus Cloud, R.I.P. How many kidnappers Missy took a Angus. swan dive into buddy. death? Let's find out Let's and go get, by to the get to the numbers. Oh, no, don't open that yep. window! No! That! <laughs> Uh, twirl it to the map! We counted 47 kills in Abigail, with the victims consisting of five men, one woman, and 41 floaters in that pool that we are not yeah, going we're to not sip gonna... through. Tent. <laughs> uh, sorry about there this on-point pie chart. We've only counted 47 kills once before on this show. Dang, the original Purge. purge. Such a this. small number compared to its sequels. With a runtime of 113 minutes, Abigail had a kill on average every 2.4 minutes. minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest Ooh. kill to Frank. There are a few yeah. exploding vampires here, but Frank's was the biggest, what? bloodiest, and most well deserved. Don't be shitty for latest. Yeah, can you imagine like, getting that close I'm to it? I'm not even just really like... sure what happened to uh -uh. it. Come on, ah! that was cool. And that's it. Abigail was released in 2024 to positive reviews, but a disappointing box office. Next mm. week, we return to the VHS franchise, but until Ooh, then, I'm Jim Cage and Denise. This has been the Kill Count. Kill Count. The next Kill Count. Welcome to Dead Meat Video. It's Dead Meat Video. Hey, we're the team at Dead Meat Video. Back with another Kill Count recommendation. Uh, recommendation. This week, it's VHS, VHS 2. VHS 2, baby. VHS 2's wraparound Remember follows this a private time? investigator who loves investigating people's privates. Hey! He and his girlfriend Oops. break into the house from the first VHS mm -hmm. to watch VHS tapes, I guess. Uh, cool. Mostly to find someone. A ride in the park is an extreme bike-riding zombie adventure. Watch as our co-protagonist tries to survive this zombie ride from the co-creator of the And Blair eventually Witch becomes Project. a zombie. Huh. Hope he's well armed. I got a big fucking stick! Phase Next. one clinical trials is a black mirror type premise where a dude gets a state of the art eye implant. And so you guys are gonna yeah, sit this one's watch first, shit, I think. No, we're gonna watch you get scared. By ghosts. <laughs> Slumber too. party alien abduction Not follows shit. a group of kids whose behavior is as foul as their language. She's probably gonna shit out her bed. Gross. <laughs> but when aliens attack, our first person fate is in their hands. Well, if it isn't More Randy from the dog. Handy, the fucking hand job. Safe Haven follows the journalists investigating one, a Jonestown-like cult in Indonesia. Their mysterious leader. No VHS. This is the one guy. you know. And his followers are ready to make this episode super demonetized. Oh, fuck. God damn it. So this week, grab some popcorn and snow caps. And watch VHS 2. VHS 2. Then on Friday, right. check out the Kill Cap. Kill Cap. Only, Only on Dead Meat Video. That's disgusting. Should we keep be watching this? Watching this. Yeah, Dead Meat Video. VHS 2. You can currently... Eh, to be fair, could be worse than watching the actually. <laughs> so, yep, the one we probably all know. We'll be seeing VHS 2 with Safe Haven, the alien abduction, and a lot of stuff. I think what people think about VHS, they're mostly thinking of this one. You know, the second movie. That's well. It does have the Jonestown like one, so you can see what's up. I won't say whatever happens there. Just go watch it for yourself, or if you guys want a little, you know. And explained, go check it out. He actually has the whole franchise too. Anyway, till next time, see ya!